Hello and welcome to Jack Scraps. Thank you for joining me today. I am Jackie and I am trying to catch up on our What A Card Wednesday and so this will be the one that I missed on April 10th. So I will do one today to get us caught up and then our next one will be on April 27th and that will get us back on track. Okay, so today we are using the Creative Stamping Magazine issue 67. This is a new one that's out and um, it's out till May 1st. In this great magazine, you get these fabulous stamps. So if you haven't already, you may wanna consider going to pick this up. I got mine at Books A Million. I know you can also find them at Joann's and Michael's. Today we are going to focus on this watercolor card right here. So let's get to it. I did notice that I had an error in the slide of supplies that I shared with you in the last video. So definitely please pay attention to these new measurements. And um, the first one is a white cardstock size three and three fourths by two and three fourths. The next is a black piece of cardstock. It is three and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. And the last piece is a six by six white piece of cardstock. The next thing you'll need is a piece of acetate. This can be a new or used piece of acetate um, because what we're going to use it with, it doesn't have to be perfect but it does have to be the measurement of your stamp pad so that it, you'll have enough room to get ink on there. You will need a uh, water spritzer bottle and I'm using the Tim Holtz Distress Sprayer. I really like this one because it has a button to where you can unlock it and lock it, which is really great. You're also able to have two different types of spray where you do a burst and then where you can make it do just little droplets. So this is very handy to have. The next you'll need some Versamark or another name brand that you might have, but it is a watermark stamp pad. You will also need some embossing powder and they call for white. But I was going through my stash and I think I might try this holographic embossing powder because it will put a little bit of sparkle into the design. I also have one of these little powder bags. Quite frankly, I can't remember what they're called, but I will link all these supplies down below. For ink, you'll need a Ranger Archival Ink Jet Black or another Jet Black ink that is permanent. I am also using Tim Holtz Distress Oxide inks and I'm using Wilted Violet, Peacock Feathers, and Worn Lipstick. Now in the magazine they actually call for abandoned coral, picked raspberry, and squeezed lemonade, but I do not have those, so I am using what I have on hand and I you know advise you to do the same. Don't feel like you have to go out and buy new product just to do this. To protect my surface, I'm using this new nonstick heat pressing sheet that I found on Amazon, and I'll have that link down below. There's actually five in this pack. It's good for heat press, ironing, baking, and crafting, and I really kind of like the feel of it, and it's very sturdy, yet flexible. So I know Tim Holtz has his. Um, it's hard for me to pay that amount for one sheet but this one came with five so I can use it for multiple you know purposes. Okay I think we will start with our worn lipstick first or the lightest color that you have in your set and you take that and just do a little smushing on your acetate Then you add a spritz of water.
then you take your six by six card and then you will take this and then just smush it on the card wherever you like. And then you will dry it. I am using a Darice heat tool and because this is noisy I will stop the filming and then restart when we are ready to go on to the next step. Okay so after I've dried it this is what it looks like. Also remember when you're using your heat tool to dry from the back side as well as the front because then it keeps the paper um, semi-flat because sometimes it can warp when you're adding water to it. Okay, so after I was done with the worn lipstick color, I used a baby wipe to wipe off my acetate and then I'm going to use the peacock feathers and do the same process. Okay, and now for our wilted violet. So this is what it looks like after we've added the three colors. From the included stamp set, we are going to use the script stamp as well as the little lines from the postmark. And um, I did have a little trouble getting the script off here just for your information, but it came out very well in the end. So what we're going to use is our worn lipstick and we're going to randomly stamp the script on the background. The next one we're going to do is the postmark lines. Now if you want, you can also take these same stamps and repeat the color with um, your second color, which is Peacock Feathers. I'm just going to do the lines and not the text, I think. Okay, now we're going to set this aside. Now we're going to take just a scrap piece of white cardstock and we're going to use our light color worn lipstick and go ahead and do the same acetate treatment that we did on our base card. So here's the acetate, put on our pink. how that turned out. And we're going to dry it. 
Okay, now that that's dry, what we're going to do is use the pen nibs from the stamp set and our archival jet black ink. And we're going to stamp that onto this image. And there they are. And next it says to cut these out individually. I have three little individual pieces and what's neat about them is then it will have that varying color just like the background. Now I am going to take the archival ink and go over each one on the edge just so that there's no white showing. Next we're going to use this stamp here. They call it the tassel stamp. I'm not sure why. I don't understand that. Maybe that's what these are. But we're going to take that and on our three and a fourth by two and a fourth white cardstock, we are going to use our Versamark stamp pad and put this image onto the white cardstock. Make sure you ink this up really good. And press down. It's hard to line that up when you can't put your head over <laughs> the image. <laughs> so we'll see what we get. Because truthfully, I make these cards right along with you when I'm making the video. I don't test them out ahead of time. I just do it and video it all at the same time. Okay, so yes, I can see an image on there. Now let me get our embossing powder. So I have an old deli sheet here. I'm going to use that. Put our card on there and I'm going to go ahead and use the holographic embossing powder from Tim Holtz. Or Ranger. Oops, almost forgot. This ought to be interesting because we're going to put ink over this once we get, you know, it heated. All right, so I'll set that aside. Now we'll take our heat gun again and go ahead and go over this. So this is what happened after I took the heat gun to it. I wonder if you can see that at all, the impression. So it made the glitter fly everywhere, even though it was on the ink. So just keep that in mind if you buy this. <laughs> you will end up with glitter everywhere. So, um, but it still has glitter on it. So it was kind of difficult to actually see when you were done with this one. Um, it did turn it maybe a little pink, and then that's kind of when I knew that it was done. So that was interesting. So we're going to take our worn lipstick again and do the same technique that we've been doing. And this time, you know, we can't heat up the ink to dry. We will just have to let it dry because that will affect the embossing powder that we just put on here. So we're going to again randomly stamp. Hmm. Let this run a little bit. Then 
I think I'll do the same thing with the peacock feathers. dab this off a little bit. So we will let this dry and see how that turns out. I must say you guys this mat really wipes up very cleanly. I had some ink on there and it just came right up without staining so I just thought I'd let you know that. And what I'm going to do while we let that dry is actually create another one using the white ink or the white embossing powder because I'm kind of wondering if this is going to let you see the image as well as we want it to. So these are still drying, but I wanted to mention that just looking at them now, the better technique is to use a white embossing powder. The holographic is just not coming through very well. I mean, all you really see is sparkle and kind of, you know, just a bit of a mess. Uh, you don't get the definition that you need. So I repeated the same steps and I used the uh, white embossing powder from Martha Stewart. It's bright white and it comes out much better. You see the imagery that is in the stamps and you can see even the definitions. So um, again, I used the same steps but the white embossing powder is definitely better and maybe I should have followed the directions but you know I wanted to kind of play around with the embossing powder to see if this would have worked. Had this been a white embossing powder with the holographic glitter in there I think it would have worked and I wasn't sure if it was like that because it doesn't say it just says holographic. So um, definitely go for the white embossing powder. Okay, now that our piece has dried, what we're going to do is adhere it to our base for that, and it's three and seven eighths by two and seven eighths width. So we're going to, you know, add adhesive on the back. I'm using um, score tape, and I'm going to try and center this. Okay, so that's done. Okay, now we're going to take the base white page and adhere it to a six and an eighth by six and an eighth black cardstock so that it will also have a nice border around it. So go ahead and add your adhesive. I'm using score tape again on the back of this. Okay, so now that we have our white base adhered to the black base, we are going to take another piece of black cardstock, and I actually just pulled this out of my scrap pile. I have um, cut this out to be eight and a fourth in length by three inches wide. And I've embossed this end just one side of it, even though it went a little bit over, using this embossing folder from Doris, and it is a um, postage embossing stamp or folder. I thought that would match really well with the postage part that we used on the front. So what we're going to do with this piece is get our scoreboard out and we're going to score it at four and an eighth. Okay. 
Now, when you do emboss, it does make the page a little bit weaker. So that's why I only wanted to do half of it. And I should have actually measured that a little bit be better on my folder. So I should have just put it through like this much rather than put it all the way up through the top. Just put it through the half side of the paper. That way it would have left the rest of this um, all flat. But it's really not going to matter because what we're going to do, we're going to take our base, turn that over, and we're going to adhere this to the back side of the card because what we're creating is a stand because we could create an envelope with it and we could make a folding card but what I thought would be nice is if we made a standing card something different so once we have this all folded the next thing we need to do is have a piece that measures four inches by one inch so that's four inch by one inch Taking that piece and our scoreboard, we're going to score at a half inch and at three and a half, or you could flip it around and do a half inch on both ends. The next thing you're going to want to do is score at the halfway point between those two. So as if you remember, I showed you a little trick where you just fold it and pinch it on the one end and then you're able to align it if you didn't know exactly where the center was. But here we know it to be two because the full measurement is four. Okay, so we're gonna fold these little pieces up and score. And then in the center. Next, what we'll do is add adhesive glue, wet glue, and I'm using art glitter glue. Add some to both sides of this. Next, we're going to open up this little stand and go up a little bit, maybe about a fourth of an inch, and center it on the page. and then fold this over. So what we've done is create like an upside down W or an A. And what it does is it actually stands. Okay. So next what we're going to do is take glue and adhere this to the back side of our card. So again, add wet adhesive glue to the back side here. Make sure we have our card going the right way. Center that and put it up about a fourth of an inch and then press that down. You could even use your bone folder to get in there and press everything down real good. And then what that does is it actually allows your card to stand up. Very cool, right? <laughs> okay, next we are going to add the layers to the top of the card. Remember our little pin nibs that we created? We're going to be adhering these now as well. 
So the first thing we're going to do is figure out the placement. I think that looks pretty good because then what we're going to do is take our nibs and add them up here to the side. I think it went like that. I think what we'll do is them backward like this. Hmm. You know, one of the things I really liked about the design is that I had, you know, the peacock feathers lines here, and I really liked being able to see them. So I'm thinking I might change the placement of these. So if you do have the magazine, you see the placement is over here on the right hand side, but I'm liking that right there. So I think I will change mine to this side. Hmm. All right, guys, I've been playing around with these little nibs, and you know what? I don't think I'm gonna use them. I had them over here. And I just wasn't feeling it. I don't want it to cover this up because I really like that. I had them down here. And I'm just not feeling it. So I'm going to forego those. I'm going to put this on foam adhesive and adhere it. So there we have our card, along with our card stand. Very cute. I love how this mirrors the front. <laughs> Actually, you could use it just like this, as like a picture frame, and like you're displaying art. Again, the magazine mentions putting a sentiment on there. They have happy birthday. It doesn't scream happy birthday to me. I'm thinking more of a get well. So I've cut a piece of cardstock here and it is two and three fourths in length by nine sixteenth in width. I don't know if it'll work with my little thing there. Hmm. Okay. So we are going to use the Get Well Soon sentiment from the stamp set that was included. And line that up where we want it. Using our black archival ink again to ink up the stamp. Okay, because the Get Well Soon seems so stark white against our lovely colorful card, I did go ahead and use that same method by adding the ink to the acetate, spraying it with water, and then dabbed it here on the sides. And I think now it actually goes much better. So all I'm going to do with this is just adhere it down with some glue. Because this is handy, I'm going to go ahead and use the art glitter glue. And 
and our card is now finished. So next I thought we would make an envelope for our card and I'm using the Momenta cardstock and this was a great uh, set of cardstock that looked very watercolor or art journalish. Is that a word? I don't know. <laughs> it is today. So I've chosen this great purple color because while we included purple in our card, we didn't really highlight that color. We highlighted the peacock feathers and the worn lipstick but when you put this card against this purple background oh my gosh it just makes the purple pop so I've decided that would be the outside of the card and then on the inside is this great um, teal color that actually matches the peacock feathers so I think it's all going to go together very nicely so I'm running out of time and what I'm going to do is go ahead and use the envelope punch board this week. I did want to try and um, make envelopes that are not using the board as well for those that don't have this. Now that our paper is cut down, what we are going to do is score at the four and three fourths line. So we'll line that up punch and then score. Line the score line that we just created up with this little nib here, punch and score again. And then repeat. Okay, now that we've done the punch board, our card envelope will look like this and we can go ahead and fold in and score on all the lines. Now, I tested out this envelope before we created ours, and what I've noticed is that it's important for this particular card how we fold and glue the sides for the fit. So what I wanted to do, let's test this a moment. So this way the card fits. There's even extra room, if you'll see there, on both sides when you fold it up. So we want to make sure, so this is like, you know, going up. We want it to go this way. So I want to make sure that we have our card folded in the right way for it to fit. And notice that there's a gap there. So what we'll do is turn this around, and now that we are lined up, it should fit. So let's try this out. So we'll put our card in there, and you'll see there's actually extra space on the side here and over here. And look, our card fits perfectly. So that's an interesting fact of using the envelope board. I've never noticed that you actually had to have your paper a certain way when you got done making all the marks. So, in case you weren't aware, now we know. So what we're going to do here, it fits in there perfectly, is go ahead and glue these sides down and I'm just going to use regular art glitter glue on this side. And 
now let's try our card again. Make sure you lift these sides up and it fits like a glove. And, ooh, it comes out nice and easy. So, now I was trying to think about decorating the front. So for the front of the card, I actually was going to create something and add to it, but I found this cute little label and I thought it went really well with the whole thing. So I think I'm just going to adhere that along with this cute little butterfly. Okay, so after thinking about the envelope for a while, I've decided to do something different and I removed the butterfly. And what I've done is I've taken the little ink splot stamp here and I used worn lipstick and I've stamped that in two places. This white was just too white for me considering everything that we've done with this particular project. So that's why I did that. Then I had also taken another scrap piece of paper, done the same smushed watercolor background. And then I stamped the little ink bottle as well as the feather from the stamp set on here. And then I cut those out. What I like about this is you have the ink color in the bottle and then the light pink on the feather, which is kind of cute. So I thought I would add these to the front. And then that wasn't enough for me, so I had some, you know, just loose doilies. So I've added some here. I had a sticker that I recently got from AliExpress. I haven't done that haul yet, but I will soon. And this is um, the box that it came in. And there's small, uh, like, office supplies that are stickers. So I tore a little of the doily and I put that on the back of this sticker. And now I'm going to attach it to the top here. I think that looks cute. So we'll go ahead and glue these down. it more dimension I think than having everything on the same plane so I think I'm gonna go with that yes I'm much more happy with that <laughs> okay I think I'm gonna be done with that envelope now so there's our project for this week I want to thank you all for joining me and for helping me figure this out along the way. And I will see you April 24th for our next What a Card Wednesday. So thanks everybody. We'll see you next time.